Very few law enforcement uh, actors could associate much with the notion of demand. Fons explained, um, they would see themselves as actually addressing demand basically by implementing the law. At the same time, it was clear that their focus was very much on offenders, on perpetrators, and much less attention, if at all, was paid to third parties that are somehow involved in, um, uh, in situations of um, trafficking. For example, in their role as clients um, or customers or uh, consumers. One, one finding um, that, we, that we saw is that uh, law enforcement actors rarely consider their uh, actions in a strategic way. Um, they uh, sanction offenders or uh, firms in the labor sector that breach employment laws um, because they come across an, an, an offense. There is very little evaluation what these interventions do. Do they bring other firms to uh, comply uh, better with the law? Uh, does it bring change to, um, to firms that have been controlled? When you speak of demand-side measures, campaigns are often mentioned as a very important measure. Many campaigns are merely awareness raising campaigns. They want to make people know that trafficking is terrible and that it exists even in European societies. But it is not indicated how this knowledge helps. So in order to have an impact, it's not enough to know that it exists. Something has to be done. Knowledge alone doesn't make a difference unless it leads to action. One conclusion with regard to the intervention of campaigns is that uh, it is important to think about more targeted campaigns. Campaigns targeted to people who really have the opportunity to, to do something about it. And then they should be better evaluated so that we can learn for future campaigns, because a lot of campaigns neither had internal nor external evaluation. So we really don't know whether they work as they were supposed to be. It's very important that campaigns do address all the different forms of human trafficking and also make clear to people that it's not so black and white. Uh, people not necessarily have to be locked up in houses. People could maybe still freely move, but are still pressured and pushed into a situation that they can not leave for other reasons. So there's a diverse of situations that could be human trafficking and it's not so simple to catch them in one campaign. Trafficking indeed needs to, to address in a more comprehensive manner and there also needs clear uh, institutional responsibilities. As for measures to criminalize demand, again it's very important to know what we mean with criminalizing demand. Uh, there's an article in the AU Directive on Human Trafficking which clearly states that states should consider to criminalize demand for certain services that might foster human trafficking. However, what you see in practice is that uh, European member states only use this article uh, to establish measures to address the sex industry and not other sectors. Well, we also see that not only the sex industry is vulnerable, but more sectors are vulnerable. So we do not really believe in criminalized, criminalized clients, either those who uh, sell services. Uh, similarly, would you not uh, criminalize uh, au pairs or domestic workers, but rather give them more rights, give them more access to justice and support. Uh, however, we do believe that those that are responsible for human trafficking, whether they are a recruiter, whether they are a transporter, with the intention to exploit someone willingly, they should be criminalized. So human trafficking should be criminalized.